Hello. Today I'm going to show you everything you need to achieve a full guitar sound and record it using your computer instead of an amp. I will also explain how to record audio from a vocal microphone at the same time. We're going to break it down to the absolute basics, so I only recommend this particular video for total beginners to the world of recording guitar and creating content. Let's take a first look at everything we're going to need. Here's what we'll need. A guitar, a quarter inch instrument cable, a personal computer or laptop, a USB audio interface, studio monitors or speakers, a digital audio workstation program, guitar plugins, a vocal or XLR microphone, and an XLR cable. Don't let the number of things here overwhelm you. We are going to take it one step at a time and make it very easy to understand. For this purpose, you can use any guitar with electric pickups. Pickups are located under the strings here on the guitar body and pick up the sound from playing the strings and output it through this jack here. This is what a guitar pickup sounds like by itself when I play a G chord. To get that sound from the guitar to somewhere else, we need an instrument cable. For this purpose, we use an instrument cable with a quarter inch jack, which looks like this. It is important to make sure you get an instrument cable, as there are other types of cables that share this same jack. In this video, I'm going to be suggesting a lot of ways to achieve our goal while saving as much money as possible. However, the instrument cable is something that we don't want to cheap out on too much. Quality cables are essential to preserving the sound coming from the guitar, and we want to transmit the audio from the guitar in the highest quality way we can. You don't need to spend much more than $20 for a very high quality 10 foot instrument cable, but you shouldn't be spending less than seven or $8. If you have flexibility in your spending, check out the offerings from Fender or Boss. If you need the cheapest options available while still providing the quality we need, look at the brands Hosa or Blue Coil. If your goal is simply to record audio, you do not need a particularly strong computer to achieve it. I am able to easily record audio using a two input interface on this laptop, which was around $600 in late 2020. For more robust recording setups, or for adding video or streaming elements, I do use a much more powerful computer, but you definitely do not need a high-end PC to record audio. You can also use any monitor or screen you like, there's little to no added benefit to having a higher quality screen as long as it is comfortable to look at. An audio interface is a piece of hardware, a physical thing that you can hold, with inputs for your audio sources, as well as outputs for your speakers and a USB connection to your computer. This is essentially the brain of our whole operation and will be central command for everything audio related now. Technically, you can find audio interfaces for as cheap as $20. I don't recommend this. The reason I very much suggest you get a higher quality interface is because of drivers. Let's digress for just one second. For your computer to communicate with a piece of hardware, they use a type of software called drivers. Software is any combination of computer files and programs that makes things happen on your computer. Drivers are a little different. You don't really see them on your computer, but they are always there behind the scenes, working hard to make sure your computer is communicating well with all your hardware, like your screen, your keyboard and mouse, or an audio interface. The cheapest audio interfaces make use of default drivers that come installed on your computer already. You might see them in some settings menus called ACO for All. While they may work, they aren't optimized to work with your interface, and you will run into issues like latency where there is a significant delay between when you play a note on your guitar and hear it through your speakers. This makes playing guitar through your computer next to impossible. Latency is bad. Another problem you can run into using default drivers is exclusivity. The ACO for all driver can usually only handle one audio source at a time. So even if you are set up well playing guitar through your computer, you wouldn't be able to hear audio from other sources at the same time so playing along to YouTube videos or songs becomes impossible. This is a very discouraging issue for beginners because one of the best ways to learn nowadays is playing along to videos or tabs on your computer. Higher quality and higher priced interfaces 
have their own drivers built into the hardware, or sometimes accessed via the internet, and these make all of the issues I just mentioned non-existent. Not only will you experience zero latency, but your interface will become a hub for audio and can output all your computer audio through the same speakers you're hearing your guitar through. These optimized drivers will also allow your computer to work less hard and put more of the load on the interface itself, minimizing the need for a strong computer. Now let's get back to the audio interfaces though. Now that we've ruled out the cheapest interfaces, the most popular option is very clear, the Focusrite Scarlett model line. If you have watched any music or gear channels on YouTube, you've likely seen these little red boxes on someone's shelf already. The Scarlett line by Focusrite is practically an industry standard by this point for not only beginners, but everyone up to high-end professionals. By the time you need to upgrade from a good Scarlett interface, your new one will probably cost five or 10 times as much. There are lots of reasons the Scarlett line is so popular and why I actually own two myself. First off, Focusrite has excellent drivers, so your experience on your computer will be very easy and efficient. The interface itself is fairly sleek with a simple setup that is easy to understand and get started with. And the line ranges from very small two input interfaces all the way up to very big rack units with tons of inputs. Now, as a beginner, you will be tempted to buy the Focusrite Solo. This has one instrument input and one microphone input. If this is what you can afford, go for it. It will work great. However, if you have even a little flexibility in spending, I highly recommend going for the Focusrite Scarlett 2i2. This is very similar, but the two inputs are combination instrument or microphone inputs. This interface will grow with you a bit more than the Solo and won't need to be replaced as quickly. The Solo can be a bit limiting as you expand to new projects. Focusrite also offers a killer bundle that comes with this 2i2 interface, a vocal microphone with cable, and a mic stand. This bundle can be found on sale quite often, and Focusrite also offers B-stock versions of this sometimes on their own shop at Reverb.com. I consider this to be the best starting bundle for a beginner looking to get into recording. Okay, enough about interfaces. So, we are getting very close to being set up, but what good is any of this if we can't hear ourselves or any audio? An audio interface needs speakers, referred to as studio monitors. Don't get these confused with computer monitors, which are the screens. Studio monitors are called such because the speakers provide a highly accurate representation of your sounds and are essential for music production. Many other types of speakers have equalization changes on them to suit them for something specific. For example, many supposedly high-end headphones just have a massive bass boost. While this may sound good in your ears, you want to be hearing your music in as neutral a way as possible when recording or mixing. Luckily, you don't have to spend too much to get high-quality monitors. For a beginner, you can find a great pair for $99, like this PreSonus Aris E3.5 set I bought when I was just starting out years ago and haven't needed to upgrade yet. You'll want to plug these studio monitors directly into your audio interface. If you have an interface with high-quality drivers like we talked about, it will use the USB connection to be able to play all of your computer audio through the studio monitors, so you won't have any need for normal computer speakers. To plug in your speakers, you're going to want TRS stereo audio cables, two of them. Now these have the same quarter inch jack as your instrument cable, so don't mix them up. You can easily tell them apart because these stereo cables for your studio monitors have two rings here on the jack, compared to just the one on your instrument cable. Your monitors might come with these cables, but I opted to get these bright red cables so I could always immediately tell them apart. I recommend getting these in a pretty long length, such as 10 to 15 feet, so you don't run into any issues placing them where you want and still having your interface wherever you want. You don't need fancy speaker stands, but once we're fully done and set up, you will want to fiddle with their placement to make sure the sound is aimed just past your ears evenly on both sides. With studio monitors, even very slight adjustments can make a big difference. It can help a lot to have someone help you so you can sit how you would be sitting normally and have someone else make the adjustments until it sounds perfect. You will know when you have them set just right because it will feel like the sound is coming from the space between the speakers or from your computer screen. 
Then you know you're sitting in true stereo audio. OK, the interface is plugged in. Windows is using the drivers, and you see the interface as a speaker source in Windows. You have your studio monitors hooked up, and you can hear your computer audio. Your guitar is plugged into the interface, but you don't hear anything when you play. Now you need a program that lets you hear the guitar and record it, as well as make it sound like a fully amped up guitar. This is where we get to digital audio workstations, or DAWs. A DAW is software, a computer program, that communicates with your interface and shows you all the different inputs within it. This lets you activate the input that you have your guitar in and hear the guitar come through your studio monitors. This software will also allow us to add the virtual amp programs onto our guitar sound to make it sound awesome and full. The go-to DAW for beginners is called Reaper. Reaper is run by some very awesome people and helped by a massive community of passionate producers. It is a full function DAW, and while some people don't find it to be as easy to use as some other DAWs, anything else is vastly more expensive, and there's no reason to use anything else when just starting out. Reaper gives you a 60-day free trial, which gives you full access to the program exactly as if you bought it. They will never lock you out after the free trial either, so technically, you could use it for free forever but you will appreciate the program so much that you should definitely pay for a proper license when you can. It's only $60, about one-tenth the price of some other DAWs. Here is Reaper's site. You navigate to the version you need and download the installer to your computer, like so. Once it's done, run the installer and now Reaper is on your computer. Boot up the program. It may look overwhelming at first, but don't worry. We just need a few functions for now. First, let's make sure our interface is set up. Now that Reaper is communicating with our interface, we need an audio track. Create the track. Now, to assign it to our guitar input, we first need to arm or activate it for recording by pressing this button. Now you can select the input that this track will project. Our guitar is plugged into input 2, so let's change it to that. Now you can hear the sound of the pickups like we heard briefly earlier. This sound kind of sucks on its own, and it's very quiet. Well, the first problem is the interface doesn't actually know that we plugged a guitar into it. In its default mode, it's prepared for microphones, synths, audio mixers, and stuff like that that is sending a strong and balanced signal to the interface. A guitar sends a very weak and unbalanced signal, so we need to activate instrument mode on the interface. On my larger interface, I use this software to do so. But on your 2i2 or similar interface, there's probably a physical button on the interface, like right here. Activating instrument mode balances and strengthens the guitar signal. But now it still sounds very plain. That's because we have no guitar amp, but we don't need one today. Instead, we are going to use more computer software called plugins. Plugins are another special kind of combination of computer files and programs, kind of like the drivers we talked about earlier. But these plugins can be applied to your guitar signal to make it sound like almost anything you can imagine. And many of them are very sophisticated and have their own program layout. The most simple plugin, and the most important to us right now, is called an amp simulation or amp sim. 
This is a virtual or digital replication of a real-life amp turned into a plugin that you can apply to your guitar signal so that when you play, you hear the sound through your studio monitors as if you were plugged into a mic'd up amplifier. What's great about this is you can achieve that sound at lower volume levels than could ever be possible with a real amp. That's why this setup is so perfect for beginners at home or even someone more experienced who lives in an apartment and can't play loud. Let's download a free amp sim and check it out. My favorite free amp sim is from the amp master himself, Fluff, from the YouTube channel Riffs, Beards, and Gear. He offers a simulation of his awesome 5150 amp for free through his partner, ML Audio. Here's the site, which will be linked in the description as well. Here's the free amp sim. You still need to, quote, purchase it and check out, but it is completely free. Most likely, the plugin will download automatically to a directory that Reaper will automatically check, but you may need to go into the settings menu again and add wherever you saved the plugin to so that Reaper knows to pull it into the program. Once you've done that, let's go back to our guitar track. Plugins are considered effects within the DAW, so let's click this little effects button here. This is how we can add plugins to this track. You should see ML Audio as a choice, and there's the plugin. Double click to add it. Immediately, you should hear a nice, full, distorted guitar sound. <laughs> Within the plugin, you can mess with different available presets or tweak the knobs on your own with your mouse. Plugins like this are great because they look like a real amp and can help you understand the changes you're making. Now you're ready to record. Since the track is already armed, you're ready to just hit this bigger record button and get started. You can hit the space bar to stop recording, and then you can listen to yourself back. When you're ready to purchase proper guitar plugins, check out the offerings from Positive Grid Bias or Neural DSP Archetypes. Okay, we're almost done, but I promise to show you how to simultaneously record your voice too. Let's grab our microphone and cable and get it hooked up to the interface. This type of cable is called an XLR cable and has this very distinct plug. You definitely won't get these mixed up with your instrument cables. We add a new track in Reaper so that the microphone audio is separate from the guitar track. You can have multiple tracks armed and recording at the same time. We arm the track, and since we're already plugged into input 1, we're good to go. Hmm. Nothing. That's because this type of microphone needs power to it to work properly. This is a condenser microphone. It requires something called 48 volt phantom power, basically a very low power source that is transmitted through the XLR cable to power the microphone. This power source is built into our interface, so we only need to press this button here to activate it and power the microphone. Hello, hello. There we go. If you don't want to hear yourself back in real time, click this button twice to turn off monitoring for the vocal track. You'll still know it's recording because you'll see the levels change as you speak into the mic. It's worth mentioning that this supplies that power to both inputs on the interface. The 48 volt power won't do anything to your guitar signal. It'll be totally unaffected. And if you have a dynamic microphone, like the Shure SM57 or 58, they don't need the power but we'll ignore it, so you can safely combine it with this condenser mic. However, some microphones are more sensitive, such as ribbon microphones, like this one from MXL, and the 48 volt power can damage it. Just double check with a quick Google search if you are ever unsure.
Now we have audio coming from both sources and we are ready to go. Now when you hit record, you can play guitar and talk and it will record both on separate tracks. Depending on how loud you have your speakers, your guitar sound might bleed into your vocal microphone, especially with a condenser mic like this. So you may want to experiment with recording while using headphones to mitigate this issue. Once you're done recording, you have a couple options as far as turning these into audio files that you can use in other editing programs. You can simply export it all as one file where the guitar and vocals will be combined, or you can export it so that each individual track is its own file. Once you've done that, you should see the files in the directory you chose. Now you're free to import these files into any other editing program you choose to use to make videos or other presentations. And that just about covers it. Thank you for sticking through all this. I know it is a lot of information, and I really hope it's helpful for someone. Let me know if you want to see Too Basic become a series. I could make follow-ups on how to add video into this whole operation, how to screen record Reaper while using it, or how to stream your guitar and microphone audio as a single microphone source for use on sites like Discord, Omegle, Skype, etc. Thank you again, and have a good one.